Hello, folks. So I am trying this new L-Pro filter for the first time, and I'm, I'm doing the Orion Nebula, and uh, the Orion Nebula is always a challenge. Um, well, it, it's, it's really it's a good and bad test. First of all, there's a lot of signal coming from Orion, so I, I, when there's a lot of signal coming your way, you, it, it can sometimes win over the light pollution. So, But then again, you have to deal with that bright core as well. So um, I captured HA on this a while back. I'm going to do an HA um, LRGB image, and L, the L-Pro has taken the place of my Loom data. I just wanted to show you how it's going so far with this L-Pro. And I'm doing, um, uh, let's see, 30-second exposures. And I've dropped the gain all the way down to 0 and the offset of 10. So I'm going low, and I'm dithering every third frame, and the mean readout is definitely... Uh, well, actually, I would say 1185 is within a, a, a decent range. I always say if I can get between somewhere at 11, eight, between 800 and 1200 or so um, on my LRGB data, that, that's kind of the range I want to shoot for. Um, if, if it's beyond that, I'm starting to think there's either haze out there affecting it or, or um, light pollution or the moon. Um, but, you know, that's just me. That's what I'm used to. And I'll keep aiming for that range, but a lot of times with my LRGB data, it, it does go higher. And this is the most recent frame, and and I guess this is already a good sign, because I, I can, I mean, these are the four bright stars already in in the core, so I can already make them out. So, and uh, I've already stacked 30 images. Um, and that would give me about 30 seconds apiece. That's 15 minutes worth of exposure. And now let's go over and look at that data. So we actually had some clear weather, so I went all the way and just finished Orion. And let me show you what I came up with. This is um, data I had actually captured before. This is uh, maybe, a, I don't know if it was a month or two ago, on HA. Um, and uh, that's how it looks. This is just a straight stack and no other processing. I did line up the data and crop off um, the, the edges because uh, um, when I reloaded all of my um, LRGB filters, the, the camera wasn't perfectly in the exact same position, so I did lose some stuff around the edges. But I saved enough of it, so I still have Orion and Running Man. So that was HA, and this is over three, about three and a half hours of the L-Pro, and uh, again, I didn't do any other processing, so for three and a half hours in my light polluted area, when the, the signal is strong from any nebula, it looks pretty even from edge to edge, so um, that's pretty good, and that's red, <clears throat> a half hour of red. Now I did uh, uh, gain zero on all of my uh, data except uh, um, HA. I did gain zero, but the red is one minute exposures. And green is uh, 30 second exposures at gain zero. And I was a little disappointed with the green because there's a, a star that's off the edge and you can see the green did have a halo left over from that bright star creeping into my frame. So that wasn't cool. And the same thing with my blue. This is a 30 second, these are 30 second exposures, a half hour of data, gain zero. And I can still see, again, somewhat, somewhat that, that halo there. <clears throat> and another thing with the blue, the stars came out so bloated compared to my other data. And I was telling Jason, why the heck are my blue stars so bloated? And he, you know, he blamed it on seeing conditions of something about uncalibrated data. And, um, uh, I know he said he had a problem over the weekend with uh, his red, even though he captured RGB on the same day. I think he was mentioning that his red was bloated and he wants to recapture it. And I probably should have recaptured my blue, but I don't know when we're going to get a clear sky again. So I just decided to work with what I had. And 
um, you know, I, like I said, I was doing 30 second exposures on these on the LRGB, and a lot of people will actually to preserve the core, they will actually um, do short exposures. For example, five seconds on the core, and then do longer exposures on the outer area and use that. I think it's called the HDR process, and then combine all the data. But for me, you know, with my I always talk about my light polluted skies. I don't really have the luxury of doing long exposures. I mean, it would be nice, but I don't. And so I just try to find that one um, exposure length that would just let me do everything. And that's why I came up with the 30 seconds. And uh, I, I think I, I actually did preserve the core, and I did get probably not as good a nebulosity as I could have outside, which, but it, it's, it's not that bad. And... This is what my RGB combined looked like right off the bat. And the thing is, I, I think I broke all the rules when I was processing because to preserve that core, my car was my core was getting blown out when I tried to combine the data um, with linear data and then making a histogram. I just couldn't preserve the core. And so what I did is I wanted to work on all of the LRGB data individually and bring out the core in those. And then, um, and I had to do that I had to make them all nonlinear to do that. And so I actually combined the data when it was nonlinear, which is, you never really see that going on much. Everyone does it in the linear stage. But, you know, I, like I say, I broke all the rules and it is what it is. And, and if you can see my RGB data, I actually did have those four stars in the core. Um, it's not super sharp, but as long as you can see those four stars, you know you're working with data that's not blown out. I mean, you don't have to show those four stars in your final processing. A lot of people like to leave that brightness in there, but it's just nice to see that if you ever wanted to go back to the data, it's there and you can work with it, you know. So let me... Uh... So what I did after that my RGB combine, I, uh, I ran an ABE and, you know, sometimes I, I just work with data and uh, not thinking I'm going to end up keeping what I've got so far. So I just did a quick ABE to see how it looks and one thing leads to another and I wind up keeping the ABE. Just as I progress farther, like, well, I'm not going back to redo something now and do a DBE. So this is what I ended up working with. That was my ABE, and somewhere along the, the line, I did do a, a, I always forget the name of that, a photometric, that, that new color calibration in PixInsight, but it didn't really make a heck of a lot of difference. And I always, and I, and I don't think my, I, I, I think uh, my RGB was not strong enough. Maybe I should have gone more than a half hour on each filter, considering I have over three hours of luminance and over three hours of HA, maybe it gets overpowered by by that extra data. But this is the ABE, and this is what it looked like after I added the luminance, the LPRO data. So that's that. Um, So I definitely picked up, uh, I definitely added more detail. Running Man is a little more uh, uh, defined and there's uh, more nebulosity and it's a little smoother in the background too. So that's 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 the, a, the RGB plus the yellow pro data. And what's next here? Okay, now this is after I added, let's see, HA. I, I'm not sure if this is what phase, I, I, I tried a number of times to add HA. So this is, I just grabbed one of them to see what it looks like. And uh, you can see what the, now the, the HA was so strong that I was losing the shape of Running Man. This shape was taken over Running Man. You see how it looks over here, more like an egg. So what I had to do was I created a mask to protect Running Man. So Running Man has no HA in it at all. And uh, the rest of it has HA. So that, that's how I did that. The funny thing though, is if you look at the stars, um, 
they look a lot more bloated um, until I add HA. HA, when I added HA, it seemed to just magically sh shrink all my stars. I'm like, oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> That's a surprise. Uh, and, and in fact, uh, when I guarded um, uh, Running Man, I, I, I created a mask so these stars um, weren't protected. So that way, the HA wound up sort of shrinking those stars as well for me. So, yeah, cool. I'll take that. And, uh, let's see. Once I had that, though, with the HA, um, I, I tried working with that data, and it really wasn't coming out uh, the way I, I really had hoped. It wasn't, to me, colorful enough. I, I was trying to fake it by adding more color here and around the edges, because it was seemed like it was mostly just white. And I, is it supposed to be just white like that? I wasn't sure. And another thing, this is, a, um, you can see I screwed up the core. The HA data didn't have a good core, and I kind of did have to fake it with a clone stamp, so I wasn't happy with that. So I actually, um, <clears throat> let me shrink this. I actually went back, I, I not only protected Running Man, but I, I protected the core as well. And, uh, and you can see now I can just see those four core stars. Not great, but it's, it's there and, and I'm, I'm more happy with the core here. And like I said, a lot of people just want to leave this area bright and that's fine too because it's a bright nebula. And um, what I also did is I added um, HA <clears throat> not only as as a layer of loom, but I added it as red to give me some red around the side. Um, and so it didn't, it looked to me to have more color to work with this version as opposed to this without adding HA as red. And uh, let's see. Uh, this is one version I called final. It's really not your typical colors. I wasn't really satisfied with how it's looking. It, it doesn't have that, it does not, there's more of a pinkish in here. There should have been an eye. Maybe I didn't have enough RGB data to work with in the end. And then I tried to overcompensate and that one's a little too colorful. And I, I wasn't really happy with that. It just, it just it looks like it wants to swallow me and eat me alive. And so I went back and uh, I toned it down a bit. And this is the version I came up with. This is what I have pegged as final. Um, I think I can live with this one. This one's just a, maybe some people will like that, or maybe the people will like an earlier version when you see this video. I don't know. But uh, this is the one I decided to work with. I've got my running man. Uh, I've got a lot of data in between. I've got, uh, I can see the four stars barely in the core. I sharpened it a little bit. Um, yeah, I'm still looking at it, but I can live with this. I think it would look cool on a metal print. It may not have the, 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 all the, the standard Orion colors that I see other people come up with, but you know what? My, my stuff never has the standard color. It looks different, but I I don't know if it's just my location. I can't really pull it off or, or what, but it's definitely a challenge. Um, I'm, I'm literally red, borderline, white zone. So um, what do you think? Let me know what you think. I, I can handle constructive criticism. I, I'm pretty happy with it compared to my other versions that I've done so far. So um, that's all I got to say, folks. Thanks for listening, and I will see you later.